Welcome ladies and gentlemen to Commodity TV and day two of the Precious Metal Summit in Zurich. And now it's my honor and pleasure to talk yeah, to my first uranium company this morning, Fission Uranium Corporation. And Ross McElroy, CEO, is here with us. Good morning, Ross. How are you? Good morning, Jochen. Yeah, great to have you here again. And uh, I was just thinking about this morning. I think it was 2014 when I visited your PLS. Uh, in the middle of winter. In the middle of the winter was minus 35 degrees. Indeed. Jesus Christ, that was unbelievable cold. <laughs> and but and I never landed on a lake, on a frozen lake with such a small airplane, honestly. I was a little bit frightened. But it was highly impressive uh, to see what you got there. And it was just like the yeah the real start of the exploration. Now we are nine years later. That's uh, that, Then we see how long it takes such projects. But it looks like that you guys have achieved really a lot. So... Where are we today? So you're right. It's been a long time. In fact, it's been 11 years since discovery. And as you say, nine years since you were up. You were on in the in the early days when we were expanding uh, and growing the uh, you know the the triple R deposit. At this stage, we've completed a feasibility study. We are marching onwards uh, towards production. So I would say right now we're uh, in the you know the advanced stages of the permitting process uh, mm -hmm. in order to have approvals from the province of Saskatchewan mm -hmm. and the federal government of Canada in order to uh, provide us with the uh, approval to be able to construct uh, and, and build and operate a mine. So our timelines really to have all the approvals in place begin construction would be 2026. Mm -hmm. So just a little more than two years out from now. And then, uh, then it's construction and onward. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I saw in your presentation by 2029, you want to be in production. I think that your uranium is heavily needed in the industry, as we discussed it yesterday also at the uh, Zuri Investor Dinner. And um, so from that perspective, you said feasibility is already there. What are the numbers? What are the figures? Because I saw $9.77 costs per pound. Is that correct? Yeah, so it's under $10 US, yeah. uh, U308 per pound. Um, you know, and all in sustaining costs uh, would be just under $14 US. So you, uh, incredible margins when you think uranium was at trading at now $74, mm -hmm. mid-70s. Um, you know, this, there, there's some uh, incredible margins on, on this this project. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah, you're definitely. right. <laughs> Uranium is, is very much needed in today's world. Absolutely. What would be the projected production per annum, approximately? So, we're looking at just over 9 million pounds a year uh, annual production. Um, you know, at, and we're, we've outlined in the feasibility study a 10-year mine life. A lot of room for growth on the deposit. Um it's still open-ended, and plus there's a quite a significant uh, part of the deposit yet to convert from inferred to higher indicated mm -hmm. uh, resources in order to bring it into the mine plan. So we'll be continuing with that work as we get into 2024, so continuing to expand the mine plan mm -hmm. going forward. But um, yeah, no, it's, it's pretty impressive uh, what we've outlined so far. Yeah, definitely. Um, how much money is needed to build the whole thing and how do you intend to finance that? So the initial capital uh, capex is about just under 1.2 billion Canadian. So, um, and this is on very recent feasibility uh, numbers. So I think the numbers are, you know, quite current. Yeah. And inflation resistant. <laughs> well, and it includes all the inflation that we saw over the last two or three years. So I think that that was, uh, you know, so now I think we're, we're comfortable with the numbers where they're at. Um, you know, certainly as we get into the need for project financing, and I'd say 2025 will be a, you know, a significant year for us along that. Um, I suspect there'll be a large portion will be debt financing, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, we'll also keep our options open, whether we have strategics come in uh, uh, on the project or not. We do own it 100% outright right now. So mm -hmm. we, you know, lots of room and lots of flexibility for how we get there. Um, Uranium, I think, will continue to uh, to move forward, and, oh, and yeah. the, you know, I think we're also going to have a significant share uh, share price, you know, in, increase from where we're at right now too. Mm -hmm. So, but I, I think uh, with respect to the, the the finance capabilities, I think so, you know, portion will be equity, but I think the majority would be debt. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. Um, how does it look? Because I remember you have a, a Chinese company already in. 
right? Yeah, we have a state, uh, the Chinese, one of yeah. the state uh, utilities, um, mm -hmm. CGN Mining is... Uh, is uh, is a partner of ours. They have a 13% equity interest mm -hmm. in the company, and we also have an offtake agreement where they would be purchasing 20% mm -hmm. of our uh, production at uh, at basically spot price. Aha! Uh -huh. So there's no cap on it. There's no cap on it. But they they need the material. That's why they, they absolutely <laughs> need the material. There's still the growth story out there in the, in the nuclear sector. Yeah, super. And with 13, uh, percent you you are not getting into trouble because it's a Chinese company. I mean, sometimes uh, let's say political winds are changing. Yeah, I mean, th this investment by the Chinese w was in 2016, and obviously, uh, you know, a different uh, geopolitical environment uh, at the time. But I think it's still um, okay as a as a as a 13% equity uh, holder, I don't think that's that's any uh, cause for concern, or certainly we haven't heard heard that from the government. And um, and and Canada still trades uranium with China. If you go back to look at, at Cameco two weeks ago announcing mm -hmm. contracts to the uh, to China state. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I think it's uh, I think we're fine. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I can, I can imagine that. So with nine million pounds pr uh, projected production, I could imagine that maybe already some of the large utilities or the, let's say, yeah, the large companies needing for long-term contracting, are they already knocking on your door or is that too early? It's a little early. We are mm -hmm. having, uh, I would say, initial conversations with, with, mm -hmm. with these groups and we'll certainly look to have more. But you know, when we're we're still talking six years out from where we're at right now, you know, five to six years, mm -hmm. um, a little bit early, but it, it's never too early to talk, and it's never too early to build these relationships. But uh, mm -hmm. we don't have, you know, other firm commitments on on uh, on contracts at this stage. Yeah. But you know, and whatever we do, I still want to uh, keep a huge. Uh, I, I guess what I'm looking for would be market-driven pricing, you mm -hmm. know, rather than get locked into uh, mm -hmm. into terms, because we think the uranium price has a long way to go. Yeah. What is your uranium price target? Let's say initially for for let's say next year, but where do you see it longer term? Just a feeling. I know it's hard to say, but you you must have a feeling as a uranium, um, uh, let's say emerging uranium producer. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I mean even just looking at the forward uh, uh, costs, uh, you know, when we when we look out to 2029, when we'll be in production, we're looking at uranium in the, uh, you know, around $90, I think it is, you know, or 90, I think that's easy. I, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, we're, we're going to see 90 to to $100 uranium in the, in the possibly even next year. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm a, such a uranium bull, it's hard to, you know, be accurate with it, with it, with a crystal ball projection, yeah. but we know the price is going a lot higher and, uh, yeah, I don't think it'll be too long before we see $100 uranium. So. Yep. Same here, <laughs> definitely. No, I think we have the perfect setup in the market because we have year over year, we have 50, 60 million pounds deficit. Yes. This is not clearing off. We do not have new mines in the next two, three years at least, yeah, which could even a little bit fulfill the gap. I don't see it. yeah. And so from that perspective, I think it's getting harder and harder for those buyers. Oh, it, it absolutely is. And plus you have new um, geopolitical... Uh, you know, situations now that, you know, I think there's a lot less global trading, we'll say, in, in future uranium. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I think there's going to be, at least for the Western utilities, there's going to be a much higher dependence on North American oh, production. Yeah. And mm -hmm. really, this is, you know, where we sit right next door to the U.S., the largest mm -hmm. uh, consumer of, of nuclear fuel at this stage. So. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, and as I said yesterday in my speech, um, Bill Gates is planning like two to three hundred new data centers, and he wants to put an SMR yeah. next to every data center because for the artificial intelligence. Yeah. And if you calculate that, this is the same amount of uranium which is used today for the ninety-three uh, nuclear power plants which are in production. So, from where does it come? Yeah, I, I saw market projections now already by 2030, 2035 of three hundred million pounds world market. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, we, we know SMRs are going to have a huge impact in the future. It, you know, there's a, f a few years out yet, but uh, in, I think once they hit, it's going to be, you know, it's putting a lot of pressure on mm -hmm. the uh, on the demand side, mm -hmm. which means the pressure's on the supply side. So. Yeah. Definitely. Supply side, and this is what, when you are also coming into the play, what, what is the yeah, plan for next year? What do you want to achieve? You said you have still a lot of infer, maybe you are drilling, and are you financed for that? 
Yeah, so we're, I guess, uh, operationally speaking, we're focused on moving the triple R deposit towards production. Mm -hmm. So we have a full team in place. We've got a, uh, you know, our full development team, uh, full-time hires are, are already in. Uh, so we've got quite a skill set there. But what we're also doing in 2024, kicking off exploration again, which we haven't done for some six or seven years now. So we're also going to be out looking for other triple R deposits on our PLS uh, project. So we're quite excited about mm -hmm. about that. So that's going to be a busy 2024. We are financed right now uh, on the project development side to the point of construction. So we have, you know, we're, we've got enough money to take mm -hmm. us over the next couple of years mm -hmm. in that direction. And then exploration, uh, we just closed on a $9 million uh, financing. So we're you know, that's that's going to be uh, allowing us to turn two drills, I think, starting in, in early January 24. So it's going to be very busy on all fronts for fission. Fantastic. And as I always said, you are Mr. Uranium. You found so much uranium in your career. I'm pretty sure you will convert those infrared resources into reserves. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think we will. <laughs> Definitely. Super. Ross, thank you very much. Wish you all the best. Merry Christmas. And please keep hitting, keep it going, and keep it developing because the world needs your uranium. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, it was Ross McElroy, the CEO of Fission Uranium. Yeah, you heard it. This is one of the next uranium producers here in Canada, in North America. And uh, with 9 million pounds per annum, this is a fantastic, sig really significant uh, size. But what I really like is the cost side because we talk about approximately $15 per pound. This is honestly nothing when you produce uranium. And and our projections by 2030 is a uranium price way higher than $100 per pound. So think about it, $120, we talk about a $100 margin pre-tax, and this would be $900 million per year. That is outstanding. Those are the numbers we like to see. This is fantastic. You really, if you like uranium, check out Fission Uranium. Thanks for watching us, and bye-bye from Zurich.